Logistics tasks can pile up on your ship and interfere with deliveries between your ships and your fleet. We're going to streamline your ship's logistics pipeline so you don't have to die to a 200 stack of poo blocking your delivery of water while your crew accidentally eats some alien meat and vomits all over his friend. Space Haven can be a strange game at times. We'll cover some basics of logistics, storage rules at the ship level to automate things, storage rules at the fleet level, and how to tailor storage to nearby needs and a little bit of troubleshooting for some common issues. We'll begin by discussing who and what moves freight, storage facilities, and UI elements associated with storage. Crew members, logistics robots, salvage robots, refugees, slaves, and shuttles all move cargo. Crew members with the logistics task enabled will pick up a single item and walk it from A to B. Refugees and slaves work in a similar fashion. Logistics bots carry one item from A to B, but will eventually need to recharge at their station. Salvage bots do the same, but don't need a shuttle to traverse between ships. Finally, the shuttle automatically transports 10 items from the airlock of one vessel and deposits it at the airlock of another vessel. Let's talk a little bit about storage facilities. Currently, there are only a few places to store items. Small and large storage store everything but bodies, while the body and robot storage allow you to stack bodies until they don't hit the floor. And the floor can also act as storage. Small storage takes up a 3x1 area and holds 50 items. Large storage takes up a 2x3 area and holds 250 items. Both body and robot storage take up a 2x3 area and hold 20 meat popsicles or battery-operated battle bunnies, respectively. Small and large storage also have a toggle switch to allow or prohibit direct food consumption. This prevents crew from eating any food stored in this facility. This is primarily used to keep your crew from eating raw food freshly harvested from the grow beds. Typically, having one storage that holds only space food and processed food with food consumption toggled on and food consumption toggled off for all other storage facilities on the ship will significantly reduce raw food consumption and the accidental eating of alien meat and human feet. Each floor tile also acts as a bag of holding and you can stack up items through the roof. A common problem you'll notice is the airlock output tile will be full and this will halt any deliveries to your ship with potential catastrophic results. We can clear this tile manually by double clicking on the tile, click move item, left click on the tile with the stack of items to select those items, and left click on an empty tile or storage facility and click accept. A crew member or robot will automatically start moving these at a fairly high priority. Now you can truly live your dream of being featured on hoarders and find your long lost cat dead in a pile of old data logs. This can also be used to clear output tiles from resource facilities to keep industry flowing. If you have a pile of dead bodies stacked up at your airlock, you'll need to use a similar process but instead of clicking a move item, you click move corpse. Instead of moving items or corpses, you can eject them out of your airlock. Should your ship end up with too much mass and you need to remove 200 bio waste and it's stored both in storage facilities and on the floor, we'll have to use a few methods to eject all of it. First, double click on a tile and click eject items. Left click and drag across your entire ship. This will select all loose piles of items on your floor. You can click the minus button here to deselect individual types of items. Do this until you have only bio waste. Click accept and this will create a task for ejecting each individual bio waste item located on the floor of your ship. Next, click on your storage facilities to find where your bio waste storage is located. To eject it from storage, left click on the bio waste and click this eject button. You can eject corpses that you don't plan on cutting up in a similar way, but click eject corpses. You can also get your roleplay on by giving your crew a funeral. Set up your crew at the airlock for a farewell, double click a tile, click eject corpse, select the corpse of your beloved crew member, and click accept. A crew member or robot will pick up the corpse and eject it out of the airlock where you can follow its journey into space and play the title song for an emotional moment. Now we're going to go over some UI elements and some other basics. By clicking on an individual storage facility, we can see what items are stored in it, but you can also visually inspect it at a quick glance. 
The ship-wide inventory is tracked in the top left and can be expanded to show more items or collapsed to show less. Clicking the different ships in a fleet will show the inventory for each of those ships. Clicking this drop-down menu and selecting Fleet will show all items collectively owned by each ship in the fleet. Let's talk about permissions. Crew and robots will need to have work enabled on a ship or derelict. This is a good way to keep crews separate and dedicate certain robots for individual ships or derelict work. I recommend setting logistics bots to only work on individual ships while using salvage bots for derelict logistics. Now we need to set task priority settings. Crew will need the logistics task set to a priority above off. Before you get logistics robots or if you can't afford to charge them, I recommend setting crew with combat skills to high logistics priorities since their usefulness on the ship is situational. Left click to increase the priority, right click to decrease the priority. If you right click until you see an X, that crew member will not perform logistics tasks. This is useful for keeping that high industry crew member churning out energy rods and hyperfuel. Now we gotta talk about individual facility priorities. Individual facilities have a logistics priority slider that can ensure critical facilities remain stocked. Click on your oxygen generator, click on this button to open the priority menu, and adjust the slider to the highest. This way, the logistics tasks associated with loading water into the oxygen generator will be prioritized over other logistics tasks. Think of other facilities you view as high priority and low priority and adjust them accordingly. Next, we're going to look at the tasks overlay. Enable the tasks overlay by clicking the overlays button, then clicking this icon to open the tasks overlay. This will show an icon over every open task on the ship. This will allow you to manually assign a task by clicking it, clicking assign, then select a crew member or robot, and click accept. They'll immediately work that task. Let's talk a little bit about manual ship transfers. While most transfers are automatically queued up by need between ships in your fleet, we'll need to manually transfer items from a newly claimed derelict. Once the derelict is explored, free from enemies, and claimed by the player, we'll need to transfer the items. Press T to go to the tactical view, click on the claimed derelict, click select all, pick the destination ship, and click the move all button here. You can manually choose where each individual item on a derelict goes in your fleet, but often it's easier to have it go to one ship and then distribute it from there. If you have a mission from an NPC faction to retrieve items, the transfer orders for those items will be automatically set when you clear the derelict. There's also a little hidden menu that we can talk about. It's a hidden line graph of inventory and consumption rates over time, and you can map this to a hotkey, or you can access it here. You can view consumption and production for resource types over a maximum of 30 days at a time by adjusting this range slider. Now we're going to discuss storage rules. Now that we've discussed the key elements for ship inventory, let's talk about storage rules at the facility level to automate some of these functions. Selecting a storage facility and then clicking the rules button here will show the current inventory in that facility, but also has a means to set some conditional rules for that facility. To set a rule, left click on an item in this area to select it. Then click this button to allow no more of that item to be stored in that facility. Click this button to allow no more and empty all of that item from this facility. Click this button to have all of this item on the ship brought to that facility until it's full. Click this button to set a minimum rule for that item in this facility by adjusting the slider here. If you want to do this for multiple items, you can hold shift and click on multiple items and repeat the previous steps. If you want to apply a rule to all items in a facility, click the select all button here and apply a rule. This is a great way to empty a storage facility if you want to move or dismantle it. Click the select all button and click this button to empty everything. Once it says zero, you can move or dismantle it. At the ship level, we can use these rules and multiple storage facilities strategically placed to reduce logistics task duration when an item is needed at a facility. For instance, place a small storage near your hyperdrive engines and power generator. Now set up a rule for a minimum of two Energium and two Hyperium for the starter power generator and hyperdrive, or energy rods and hyperfuel for the X1 variants. This can also be done for a quick resupply of rocket turrets during ship battles, keeping industry facilities stocked, and storing a few feet next to your captain's quarters for a quick midnight snack.
At the ship and fleet level, we can set similar rules for an entire ship. Zoom out using the mouse wheel, pressing the T key or clicking the tactical map button here. Select one of your ships and click rules. This brings up an identical rules window to the storage facilities and we can set up rules for how resources are managed between ships in the fleet. Shuttles will automatically queue up transfers between ships, so this is a set it and forget it situation. Thanks, Bronkmobile. You can clear out rules by selecting the resource or selecting all and clicking the no rule button here. Now that we know how to set up ship rules and some fundamentals of logistics, let's talk about when and why to use these rules for a few use cases. Once you get your second ship, setting up some minimum rules for basic sustenance is crucial. Press T and click on your new ship, then click rules. In the ship resource rules window, hold shift and left click on the water, energy rods and hyperfuel icons. Then click the minimum rule icon and increase the minimum of slider to two. This keeps the algae dispenser, oxygen generators, power generator, and hyperdrive stocked with some extras to spare. Next, select all of the food related items and set a minimum rule of two to five. This includes vegetables, fruit, artificial meat, beer, processed food, space food, and nuts and seeds. If you have a medical facility, setting a minimum rule for IV fluids and medical supplies will keep your medical bed stocked. If you specialize a ship in your fleet for a few specific tasks, you may want to have all of a certain resource transferred to that ship. If your ship has all of the recycling facilities on it, select all of the scrap and click the bring here rule icon. This way, all scrap stored on other ships will be automatically transferred to this ship for processing. Overall, this will reduce the number of trips the shuttle will have to take since it'll take batches of 10 instead of doing trips back and forth with one item at a time as needed. If you're running an industry on your ship, I'd recommend building a small storage next to an industry facility. Let's use an energy refinery as an example. Build a small room to fit an energy refinery and a small storage. Now we'll walk through the process of setting some rules tailored to that energy refinery's input and output. First, we need to keep resources from being delivered and stored into that small storage. Click on that small storage, click Rules, click Select All, then click the No More and Empty rule. Now we'll identify what resources we need for input and what the output of the energy refinery are. Click on the energy refinery and click on the energy rod. This tells us that we need Energium as an input and it will output energy rods. Clicking on the hyperfuel, shows Hyperium is the input and Hyperfuel is the output. Now click on the small storage and click Rules. Hold Shift and left click on the Energium and Hyperium and click the Bring Here rule. This will force all Energium and Hyperium to be brought to this small storage as the highest priority on this ship. Next, hold Shift and click on the Energy Rods and Hyperfuel. Then click the No Rule button. This will allow the crew members to travel a short distance to retrieve the input items and a short distance to clear the output tile to allow for more production. We've gone over quite a bit about ship rules and logistics in Space Haven in this video, but it ended up being a more complex series of mechanics than I realized. I hope some of the mechanics and scenarios I laid out for why you would use these was helpful. And I hope you come up with some creative solutions to logistics problems for your fleet. If you have any questions or suggestions, throw them below or hop on over to the official Bug Bite Space Haven Discord server linked in the description below. Take it easy and good luck delivering your packages. Bye bye.